have mothers and those who mother others' children also. It is a great gift to all of us, especially us gentlemen in this world, that our mothers have cared for us this much. And I think Paul, in the same way, acts like a mother a lot of the times. So before we get to Paul, I want you to think back to when you were a child. Think about those gifts you made for your mom for Mother's Day. I was an expert at the macaroni art, laying down glue and making, you know, my mother's black hair with macaroni and then using a Sharpie to color it so it sort of looked like Medusa or something like this. It, it was not pretty. I did the coupon books where I said, here, Mom, I'll do the dishes, I'll, I'll vacuum, and I hoped and prayed that she never called in those favors. I did drawings that looked like space aliens, but it was actually me hugging my mother. And as I got a little bit older, I would forget about Mother's Day until about 11.45, right before we're going to have lunch as a family, and I would sprint to the store, buy whatever flowers they may have left over at the Jewel, after everyone has already gotten everything nice and hand her these wilted flowers that look like I picked them out of a trash can. I said, I love you, Mom. And she'd look at me and smile and say, thank you. And I know that wasn't really good, but I tried, right? Isn't that what matters is I did a last-ditch effort to try to do something nice? I think Paul may have something different for us. Paul calls us to do something different. When we act, we act with love. Not because we are obligated to do so, but because we care and love for the people we have been called to be in relationship with. I think Paul talks about this broken down into maybe four categories. Our time, our possessions, our privilege, and our power. And all of these things Paul calls us to love. How we give our time and spend our power and possessions and use our privilege. It is to be done with love. Lest we forget what Paul was talking about when he talked about love, I've got some helpers who are going to remind us what love is all about. So we've got a baseline for what love means. We know what Paul talks about when he talks about love. And we think about this letter he writes to this community. And if you heard as Christy was reading, you could hear a little bit of that snarkiness in Paul's writing. Just saying, oh, I know those churches over there are so generous. Not that I'm saying you're not. But they are really generous over there. Maybe you could learn a lesson. Because I know you're already doing it, but just saying, if you were just a little bit more generous, maybe you'd be a little bit better like those churches over there. And Paul gets them good over and over and over again and points out some spots where they may have some deficiencies in how they spend their time, what they spend their time on, what they do with their possessions, what they do with the privilege they have, and what they do with their power. So I want to think about those four things a little specifically. We have a lot of time in our lives. When we're younger, we tend to say, I never have enough time to get what I'm doing done. You're always wishing you had more time and more time and more time. And now when I talk to my grandmother, she says, all I have is time. I'm just waiting. I have so much time and nothing to occupy it with. I hope none of you are in either of those positions, but I know right now in my life, Time is the one thing I never have enough of. I think about how I spend my week, and more than half of my week most times is right here in this building, which means I'm not with my family. And while I think what I do here is good and proper, sometimes I forget about the family that I have. And I think a lot of us who work do the same. We get so tied up in our business that we forget about our families. We forget about our friends. We forget about the things that really matter in life. And then our possessions. And part of that ties into our work. I think Paul saw the community hustling to earn and get. Trying to amass wealth and things. Which I think most of us know doesn't really make you happy. But you spend your time at work so you can get the things, so you can be happy, because then you don't have the time to enjoy them somehow. And it seems to be what we find ourselves doing regularly. And then we have our privilege. Some of us have been gifted to run companies, some households, some have privileges unknown to others, and we can choose to use those for ourselves or for others. And the same with our power. I know in many conversations with a lot of you out there, the amount of ability and power this congregation have boggles my mind. 
We have the ability to change things for people if only we chose to. So think about love now. How do we do these things with love? Are we engaging our pursuits with love to take care of those? Are we using our time to enrich lives of those who are struggling to enrich the lives of our family? Because I know from talking to my mom, she would much rather have a little time with me than flowers. She would much rather go out to a meal with me, traveling across state, than send a gorgeous gold watch. Those things mean nothing, but the time does. And I know when it comes to things, we often have the choice between what we buy and what we give. And it's a hard, hard balance because there are always things we want. And it's hard to remember what others need. And our privilege. Some of you have amazing gifts to share. My mom had one in her musicality. She plays the piano to this day. It's something I grew up with at home knowing that there would not be a day that passed that I did not hear her playing the piano. It's just what she did. It's what she does. And I'm positive she does it now because I carried the piano to their new house. And it's not light. And she plays. And she took time and her privilege to share her gifts of music to a child at 13 who wanted nothing to do with piano lessons. And now I regret that. But she took that time with me and gave that privilege to me. And we have power. This power can be used to change lives. Some of you have the option in a company to send money someone's way that can change the thing. Some of you have the power to go out and serve those in need, being generous in spirit, to take care of those who are struggling most. And it's in all four of these that we find what this love looks like, where we find out how Paul calls, calls us to live because Christ called us to serve others. So I want you to take a moment and think deeply for just a minute. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and I want you to think of one word that reminds you of your mother. Do you all have that word? Just quietly to yourself, say that word out loud. I think when we think about it, we spend a lot of time, like Paul does, encouraging others to do the right thing, to spend our time taking care of those in need. And when I think about this, it's what my mom spent her entire time with me growing up doing. It was never about her. It was always about taking care, not just of the kids, but of my dad and the family and the friends and everything. It was how she used her time and her power and her privilege and possessions to change lives that impacted me greatly. And I think that's what Paul's trying to get to in this letter, telling this community that the gifts you have mean something, that you have the ability to change lives for the better if only you try. Paul has a piece that he writes near the end, and he says, once your commitment is clear, you do what you can, not what you can't. We often get tied up thinking we're going to change the world in something we do, and we get discouraged when we don't turn out to be Mother Teresa. We're not called to be Mother Teresa. We're not called to be Paul. We have a Jesus, and that's enough. But we are called to take care of those things we can. Mother Teresa famously said, no one can do any great things, only small things with great love. And it is in those small things, the macaroni drawings, the moments shared with someone you care about, that we find where true happiness lies and what it takes to truly love one another. I hope as you celebrate, remember all of the things that your mom has been to you, that you are to your children if you have them, or to how you mother others' children, that you know that you are following in a great line of those like Paul and those of like Christ who live to take care of others, to call generosity into being, and to spend time with those in a deep world full of need. I hope you find a place where you can share those gifts and be who Christ calls you to be in everything that you do. Amen.